welcome to part two. Now, um, this is New Year's Day, so you can kind of guess where we are as regards to part one. I've uh, been making inquiries about what servos to use, etc. Um, the model shop's not open until well, another three, four days, so I can't go and buy any spare wood. Although I have some spare wood, some balsa wood, so I'll be looking into um, making extra parts. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But to make extra parts, um, and I'm just going to explain something here for those who are uninitiated. You're probably wondering why have they got these drawings of the fuselage? Well, this is called a pattern. In the old days, before we had computers and microarrays and VCRs and colour TV and all that sort of shenanigans uh, and central heating, double glazing and lots of other goodies, um, what you would do, you would make a pattern. Now you're probably saying, what's a pattern? Well, I'm not talking about pretty patterns. What you do and this is old technology so those under the age of 60 probably won't know what I'm talking about you have blue copy paper one side is inked and the other side is not now what they used to use this copy paper for was typists in offices so if a typist wanted a copy say that the boss said I want to send a copy here and a copy there they get the paper, they put the blue sheet in, they put another paper on top, they put it into the top row and start typing. And when they pull it out, they've got the original and the copy. The copy goes off to whomever, and the other one probably goes in the filing cabinets or whatever they want to do with it. Anyway, <laughs> copy paper. So if you want to do shenanigans or have spare parts, because what happens is once you've fitted these things into the model and it breaks you haven't got a pattern to make a new fuselage so a word to the wise here what you do you get your copy paper you put it underneath the plan and underneath the plan you put cardboard now the cardboard where's my cardboard gone in this instance is brown flakes so it'll cost you nothing. In fact, the cardboard is probably better for you than the brown flakes. That's another conversation. And you put that underneath. Then you get a very sharp pencil. Now, if you, I have um, a proper lead pencil, the, you know, the type of architects use, they're the best. But make sure it's really damn sharp and draw around the former. And then shiver me timbers You've got a copy of it then all you got to do is cut it out now why am i bothering myself well number one if i need a pattern i've got one cut it out draw around a piece of uh, material it goes on the material i can put it on the jig and cut it out okay but what i might do is a little bit sneaky because what i might do is make two of that former because that former there is the back of the cockpit just below the headrest and then i put the other side in i can get some two millimeter ply and make one whole piece yeah how about that so i'm going to carry on copying and then i shall carry on with the rest of the video now then you have your cardboard pattern which means if you want to you can make you can flip it over and make another one and put them together which then looks like this okay so yeah okay i'm going to take that put it on some um what do you call it ply draw around it like that so then you get that and then all you've got to do is put this in, in, a, in a fret jig to get out. Now there's two kinds of fret jigs. There's the, the, the old bow type, looks like a bit like an axle, 
that my dad had, and you, or you can put it in the electric one. I happen to have an electric one, which I will show a bit later. So now, if you want to, you can do every former like this. So number one, you have a spare. You make a fuzz, uh, fuselage really quick. By the way, um, a lot of modelers, they don't say fuselage, they say fuzz. So if I say fuzz, I'm not on about the police, I'm on about the fuselage. Just in case there's clarity. Anyway, and two, you can make them all the same. And if you want to, you can redesign the inner part of the fuselage or the fuzz at will to put a flat surface in so you can put in your servos etc 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 and create room for a battery how good is that and you can get your ESG in there and everything else so you can create a larger space inside and if you want to uh, where these uh, main spars goes in you can make them half the size if you want to now all the doors are opening and you're going my god what a silly lot and you can do the whole thing as you want it you can take wood out and make it a bit lighter even though blow is a bit heavier so one cancels out the other it's, it's a win when you can't lose I, 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 I tell you what sometimes I, I think I should be in the honours list anyway there you go so we're starting off with that i will be getting the, the the electric jigsaw out probably tomorrow because it's getting a bit late tonight because i'm doing this it's all dark um tomorrow and uh i'll jig a few out and then we'll take it from there right i have had to um put the camera over here because every time i turn this on the vibration is a little bit excessive so I'm hoping you're going to bear with me there. Okay, so it's my electric jigsaw. They're no more expensive than a domestic drill. Quite affordable. They're not hard to use. And all you've got is an on and off button. So all you really got to remember is don't go through your fingers. And wear some glasses if you've got some. Um, I don't suggest you wear gloves, it might get tangled up. I've had that happen to me as a young lad and I, I learned from that. Um, just use your head. You know, if you're an idiot, don't use it. Simple as that, isn't it, really? Anyway, there you go. Uh, so we're going to jig that out. I don't know how good the light is. Yeah, there we go. We're going to jig that out. Um, and then I'll show you what I do next. Now I'm, I'm going to do a, a quick shot of this because watching me doing this is like watching paint dry. So I'm not going to put that through, I'm going to edit it out. Okay, here we go. So this is how it turns out. Um, during that video by the way I run out of memory so Okay, there you go so that comes out so all you got to do now is just sand it down and make it symmetrical and I'll take out the middle bit here and to do that you drill a hole in it take this blade out which is easy to do pop the blade through the hole dig it out take the blade off take that out and all you got to do is keep these away from the blade that's all you got to do and that's how you make lots and lots and lots of copies of things so that one day you think I want to rebuild that so what you do you get yourself a tin you put all these parts and you put the drawing in it label it put it away and then one day you think I'll make it you pull it out and there's all your bits and there's all your um, all your patterns there you go so just to close uh, this is how you do the internal pop the hole through take the blade out pop that inside the blade pop the blade back in tighten it all up that took me about 20 seconds now if you don't want to go to cutting too near the line and you want to sand it all off get yourself one of these there's about 50 quid they're not expensive you might even be able to get one from little <laughs> probably and that if you want to do things that's the kind of kit you could do with you don't have to have this kind of kit I don't use it all the time but you know it makes life a hell of a lot easier so if we offer up the former 
to the, the plan yeah you can see it's there you go line a spot on you can turn it over and there you go so now if you want to there you go you can offer that up and then you can make more informed decisions about how you're going to do things another observation about these formers if you take a long ruler like this and you draw a line you'll see that this main spar bit here lines up with everything else yeah so that means you now have a further opportunity to plan where and how you're going to put things by the way if you want to know where to get a long ruler from this one's uh, 60 centimeters long pound shop cost me a pound so get down to pound shop get yourself a long metal ruler so obviously when you're planning things bear this in mind they are all in a straight line so when you come to plan your snake or your push rods to put in for the elevator and, and the rudder and so forth you can mark on the hole where it's going to go yeah and then take your ruler and mark it all the way down and then you can line them up and draw the line and they're already on the former how cool is that so there's a lot to this plan a lot of thoughts being put into this plan so I urge you to make the best of it and furthermore when you come to your ribs make copies of the most frequent rib which you hear I think is F2 there's 10 of those okay and there's a F uh, H2 here which I think is for the bottom without turning the paper over uh, this means you can add extra ribs if you want to or just use the front so in other words if I get another ruler I want a shorter ruler really um, I'll use this so if you come to that edge there like that draw a line Okay. if you add the extra rib the quarter rib at the front that marks exactly where it goes and you can stop it up and draw a line down it and there you are you see so this has had some thought put into it and uh, I appreciate things like that so there you go now You've got your firewall to go so if you want to make a plywood firewall you now know how to do it i'm now going to carry on and copy all this stuff and i'm going to come back to you and we're going to start building the fuzz now i may make two fuzz um the one as per drawing and my, one of my own con 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 concoction <laughs> I like that. And then we'll see how we get on. I'm bored. Blah! Bored, 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 bored. I'm bored. Nah.